Hello, YouTubers, and welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I've got a part two in our uh, accessory pack series. We're going to be restoring a uh, Lesney Matchbox A1A SO Pump Island. So this is a, a pretty cool little model. It was released by Lesney in 1956, and this was the first of the accessory packs that were made uh, to try to capitalize on, on all the success that Lesney was having with their 1275 series. So this is the very first model in the accessory packs. Uh, it came with the three pumps on the island and an SO sign, uh, pretty much as you see the models here. I've also got uh, another model, uh, a double pump, that uh, I was able to pick up through one of my British resellers. And uh, it took a little bit of research and some digging, but this is actually a Wardy product, uh, W-A-R-D-I, Wardy Company. And uh, it's also part of a, a filling station accessory pack. Um, this came with a canopy that would have been over those pumps. And I, unfortunately, I do not have the canopy, but uh, the pumps are in pretty bad shape and they're red. And I was guessing that they were probably SO and they were indeed. So we're going to do a restoration of all three of these models. So step one is getting them down to bare metal. So we've gone ahead and stripped the models using our orange stripper, and they turned out pretty good. The sign, uh, when I started with it, it had a pretty good little bend, and we had the hole in the face of the sign there. Now that is original. Uh, unfortunately, it causes the decals to, to flake off and break. So I've gone ahead and filled that little hole. Um, I've used some heat with my torch and a little gentle pressure to try to straighten as best I can the, uh, the post coming up. And, you know, all in all, I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out, um, both with the, the filler on the, the face of the sign and just cleaning up all the casting lines and straightening out that post. On the warty pumps, uh, these actually stripped really, really easily. Um, I did just one dunk in them, got most of the original paint off. Um, these castings are damaged. They would have had little hoses on the side, and uh, I don't have the pieces to reattach those, so we're going to paint them as is. The SO pumps really cleaned up pretty nice. Uh, it took, I think, three dips through my stripper to get most of that original enamel paint off, um, but it, it really turned out nice. I've done a little bit of cleanup on these with the casting lines, but I want to restore this as close to original as possible. So we are ready to head into paint. To paint, I'm using my Testers enamel paints as always. I'm starting off with a little of their gloss red, which is a very close match to the SO, but I've found it needs at least four or five little drops of the gloss black in there just to darken it up a little bit. And I've done enough of the, the castings in that sort of dark red color. I've been able to get pretty good with my paint mixing. Um, so you can see I'm going to hit it here with my cappuccino frother a little bit just to start to get that mix. But like I've said on, on some of my previous videos, this is one of the ways that I gauge if I have the paint thin enough. So you can see when I hit it with the frother, it just struggles a little bit to go around. And that's just because the paint's too thick at this point. So I'll come back with a little bit of my uh, thinners, the, the testers thinners that are made to work with this paint. And you can see when I hit it back with the frother, it, it turns a lot easier. Um, I, I get no resistance on that. And so if I can froth it with my little mixer, then I know that it's thin enough to go through my airbrush as well. So that's looking pretty good, just kind of a good dark red color. I also want to mix up enough that I can shoot all of these different castings because I want the paint to be the same. And this is going to be my base coat. So I've gone ahead and, and mixed up and loaded enough paint that I can get most of these done, at least through the initial uh, base coat on these. The red, I found, uh, it's a little goofy when it comes on the casting. Uh, the first coat out, it always ends up looking kind of pinky purpley, and I think that's just the nature of working with these enamel paints. 
Uh, initially, I, I found it really difficult to gauge what the final color was going to be just because I, I didn't, you know, from the, the initial spray out, I wasn't getting a really good idea of what that color was. And a lot of times I would go and, and tweak my color, I'd, I'd remix my paints, and I've just kind of done it enough and got enough experience with it now that um, I know that initial coat is, is going to come out, sort of that pinky purple look. But as I build it up and get it thick enough, it will darken up and it'll take on that true red color. So doing a really light first coat on the castings here or tack coat, have you? Um, I, I do, I don't show it in the videos, but I do do a, gre a degreaser with these. Um, I'll coat them with a little um, thinner to make sure that I've got any, any fingerprints or grease or anything else off the casting. It's really important in order to get a good adhesion with the enamels because I don't use a primer. Um, I, Lesney didn't, so I don't when I do my restorations. So that's going to do it for our, our first pass on this casting. While I've got my paint loaded up in the airbrush, I'm going to jump over here to the Warty pumps. Um, these were, as near as I can tell from the research and I've been able to do on them, these were sold as an SO pump. The little sign in the middle would have had a, a decal or a sticker that said SO lube. And the tops of the pumps would have had decals that also read SO. Um, now you can see the, the little points on the side. Um, on this casting, they're broken off, uh, but they would have had a little point where uh, a rubber or a cloth little hose, a little tube, would have hung off the side of the pump. Um, I know as delicate as these are, even with a little heat, I I'm very concerned about trying to bend back the top pieces. I think they'll probably just break off if I do. And uh, I don't have the piece on, on the bottom to attach uh, a hose to. So I'm just going to paint these up as is. You know, the, the original casting was in pretty bad shape. So anything I do to it is going to be an improvement. On the sign, the sign was originally done in sort of a, a cream white or an off white. So I'm starting with my light ivory uh, gloss testers paint. And this is really close uh, to what the original color was. But in, in all the original models that I have, and I, I do have a mint in box copy of this set, it tends to look a little bit more yellow. So I, I've got some of my gloss yellow here. And I'm going to put just a very, very small amount of gloss yellow into my light ivory just to, to kind of tint it a little bit uh, closer to what I think that original uh, cream white or off-white color that was used on the, the SO pump signs. Um, it's, it's not a color that I've ever done before, um, so this is really going to take a lot of trial and error, but... We'll get a little bit of thinner in there and we'll hit it with our mixer frother and get it ready to apply. So in trying to figure out how to hold on to this thing while I painted it, I'm pretty sure I discovered why Lesney left that little hole in the signage. And I, I think that's probably how they held onto them or hung them from some sort of an aperture in order to paint them. Um, I want my decals to be nice and smooth and not have any issues with that hole in the casting. So I've gone ahead and filled it. So in order to hold onto it, I've used a, a little dab of super glue and a cotton bud just to give me something to hang on to the, the casting piece while I apply the paint. Now, the casting, uh, all the originals that I've looked at, they were painted on the bottom uh, as well. And so I, I want to try to do a, a single coat through this, hit, hitting the bottom and all the areas of the sign. The only area that I really won't be able to cover is where I've put my, my cotton bud and my super glue. And so I'm hoping that with a nice clean casting, after the paint is, is cured and dried on this first coat, uh, I'm hoping I can just snap that off and do a little touch-up paint with a brush uh, or even just to hide it with the, the decal. So 
I, I don't really know how it's going to work. Um, it's just a, a trial and error, so we're going to give this a shot. But I am really happy with the, the color of the cream white that we've got on this. I think it's fairly spot on for, for what this piece was originally. Um, even though it's a small piece, I found that I really needed a lot of paint on this. It's got uh, a lot of sort of nooks and crannies, and because the pieces are so small, uh, I don't hit every angle and every piece every time I go through it. So this was actually a, a fairly challenging piece to paint, and I, I used a lot more paint than I thought I was going to need to on this. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get a, a pretty good even coat all the way around. Um, I'm not doing as much of a tack coat just because it is so small and I'm, I'm going through the paint trying to get even coverage everywhere. But uh, we'll see. This may need a second coat and it may be good just on this initial first coat. So we'll get it all laid out even and get it into the oven to bake. Now you may notice that uh, I didn't spend a lot of time uh, going through the, the stripping and the disassembly on these in this video, and that's because I really wanted to use a little bit more of the time going over um, all of the, the details that I wanted to, to paint out and do on this. And I knew that that was going to take a fair amount of video time, and so I uh, kind of blew through that initial first piece because I wanted to have enough time to talk about um, the, the paint out on the details. So I've got one of my original mint original pieces um, or near mint. It, it's got some decal issues, but uh, the paint on this looks really good. And you can see from the comparison of the two, uh, we got really, really close on that red. I, I'm happy with how that turned out. To paint out the attendant, I'm using a little of the Tester's Gloss White. It's a uh, almost exact match to my original casting. And I'm using the, uh, the original piece that I have as sort of a reference for what needs to be painted and where. So to start, I'm, I'm gonna use just my fine detail brush. Uh, you see me use this in other videos and uh, it's just a, a fine tipped uh, bristle brush, but works really well. I, I find it's a good size for these castings and Generally, when I get my paint, I always end up with too much on the brush. So you kind of want to dip and then brush off some of those extra areas. And so I'm going to work through this just real carefully and using that original casting as a, a reference for what got painted, what didn't, and kind of where to stop. Um, we're going to go through and, and paint out our attendant.
For the decals on this, I, I ordered a set from Black Square. Uh, they sent me these. Uh, the colors are not quite original. The blue is a little bit brighter blue, uh, but these were actually fairly difficult to find, and I'm glad that Black Square had them, and so I, I got a set of these in here. Um, overall, I've been happy with the quality of the, the decals that I got from them. Uh, they are a little bit different in that they have to be closely trimmed out. Um, they don't, they're not like other water slides where the, the backing has been um, already dissolved around it. So all you have left is, is just the decal. And, uh, you know, I, I know that going into them and it's taken a little bit of adjustment to, to get uh, really good at working with them. But they're good quality decals and I've, I've been happy with the end results that I've had on them. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start. Um, I'm probably going to speed this video up a little bit just so uh, we're not sitting through quite so much dead time while I'm waiting for decals to soak. Uh, but you'll see um, the, the process of, of putting them on and um, overall pretty happy with how this turned out. So with one side done, I'm going to turn the casting over. And I know it's kind of goofy uh, working upside down on these, but uh, the, the shape of the casting, it really kind of lends itself. This gives me the most access to the tops of the pumps, and it's the easiest to apply the decals. So I'm doing them upside down.
For the decals on the sign, it's basically the same process. Um, the decals are a little bit larger, so I let them soak a little bit longer. Here you can see that area where I had the, the little cotton bud super glued to it. Um, was able to remove that pretty easily after the paint had cured. And of course, the other side looks really uh, nice and smooth. What I actually ended up doing was uh, using my X-Acto knife just to kind of chip at the edge of that paint and, and get that um, super glue loosened up. And after I, I got it off, I uh, hit it with my sanding sticks, my little nail files, just to smooth it out a little bit. And then while I still had my off-white paint loaded up in my airbrush, hit just the face of the sign there to touch that up because um, the rest of the casting was was cured out by then and I could hold on to just the base. So pretty happy with how that paint came out and we'll let these decals soak a little bit and then get them applied. So if you followed the channel uh, for any period of time, you, you know that when I do my decals, I'll typically hit them with a decal setting solution when I'm done. And I will go ahead and do that on these. But I also want to try something new. Um, I'm going to do a gloss clear coat over all of these castings once I get all the decals done. Um, I've really struggled to find a good clear coat that doesn't interact with my base uh, paints and even using the clear coat from testers, I haven't been very pleased with it. Uh, so I'm gonna try a new blend on these uh, with, with this restoration. I've also added this little toaster oven. Um, it's a tip I picked up from a couple of the other restoration channels and uh, they've used them with uh, some pretty good success. So we're gonna try it out on these castings and see how they finish. So as a reminder, here is what we started with. Uh, most of these castings were in pretty bad shape. Uh, you can see the, the bend in the sign that was there. Most of the original paint was gone and nearly all of the original decals. And when I look for castings that are good candidates for restoration, these are the kinds that I want. If something is, you know, even play worn, but it's mostly still there. I'd rather have an original than a restoration most days of the week. But uh, with these particular castings, I've got multiples, I've got them into original, and these were worn down to the point where I felt like it was okay to, to do a restoration on these. And here is our finished models. So this was really a lot of fun. Um, I, I really, uh, enjoyed doing this restoration. I know I didn't show a lot of the paint out process on the warty uh, pumps and, and there was a reason for that. I kind of wanted to have a little bit of a surprise here at the end for all of you. Um, the sign, as you can see, turned out really nice. I did get a little bit of bubbling on the one side on the decal. Um, nothing that was, was too noticeable, so I didn't go ahead and, and redo it or change it. And I think the bubbling was was something to do with uh, baking the clear coat. I think I, I must have had still a little bit of uh, water underneath that, that transfer that when I, I heated everything in the oven, it caused it to bubble up. So you can probably catch that on the back side of the sign. But overall, really, really pleased with how these came out. Um, the original SO pumps, the, the paint color is an exact match. Uh, the, the decals really uh, look nice with everything fully restored. 
And these little warty pumps, you know, I, I don't collect warty, but you know that I do like knockoffs and, and I do like uh, similar um, castings from other manufacturers. And these were a blast to work on. Uh, all the little details in there. I did some, uh, some paint outs with some of the, the silver um, as well, just to offset some of those lines in the sign and in the castings. And it was really a lot of fun to work on. So uh, overall, really pleased with how these came out. Um, they'll, they'll be a, a standout star in my collection. And it was fun to kind of learn about uh, the, the Wardy line and some of the stuff that's there. So if, uh, if you know more about that, I'd love to, to learn more. Uh, leave me some comments down below uh, and let me know. If you got any leads on where I might find the canopy to go with these pumps, uh, let me know because I, I think uh, it's another line that just with all the details in these castings and, and how much fun it was to, to work on them, I may want to do a few more of those in the future. So as always, let me know what, uh, what you like that I did in this. Let me know what I did wrong and uh, anything you want to see in the future on, on the channel. I love trying new stuff and uh, want to show you guys what you want to watch. So as always, if you like the video, give us a like down below. Um, you can subscribe, click, click the link to subscribe and ding the bell so you get notified of all of our future videos. And as always, join us next week for another vintage diecast restoration.